Electric Equipment and Engineering, established 1922, Denver, Colorado, celebrating 100 years of design, engineering, and manufacturing world-class electrical products. Electric Equipment and Engineering was founded in 1922 by Anthony Jim Maroney, an Italian immigrant with an 8th grade education. Leaving his mother and his home in southern Italy behind at the age of 11, Jim and his father set off in search for a better life for the family in the United States. On arrival in the U.S., Jim, like many other immigrants at the time, learned that the western states offered the best opportunity to earn a living in the new world. The Denver and Rio Grande Railroad provided the family the opportunity to work and move west. Working in the western states from a young age as a barber, laborer, and at a paving company in the mining industry, he and his father worked tirelessly to bring the rest of the family over to the United States. In 1920, Jim reconnected with a relative in Pennsylvania and moved from Utah to work in the electrical industry. The Westinghouse Corporation hired Jim to repair and rework electric motors. While at Westinghouse, and later General Electric, Jim was able to gain a hands-on understanding of motor theory, switchgear, and generators. He was eventually offered a job to work in California, and the family decided to return to the West yet again. Jim would never reach California due to his mother's death in Utah. He recalled his childhood days when the Utah-bound train made a stop in Denver. It is in Denver where Jim is first able to use his newly refined electrical talents out west when a local motor repair shop hires him. Denver did indeed welcome Jim as he exited the train at Union Station, located at 17th and Wincoop. It is here that he decided to use his newly learned electrical talents in the growing state of Colorado. In the early 1920s, Jim was hired by Morse Brothers Machinery and Supply, a company that serviced the Colorado mining industry with industrial equipment and DC motors. Jim was able to use his experience of working with Westinghouse and GE to set up an electrical department and later a motor repair and supply company inside Morse Brothers. Jim worked on all kinds of special projects for the Morse Brothers, as well as some of his own ideas, or brain children as he called them. Besides selling my work consisting of motor repairs, designing, assembling, and at times installing power plants and the like, designing of special machinery, I solicit designing special machines and appliances. Consequently, have many brain children, meaning a large number of ideas. Morse Brothers is a large concern, and as their engineer, we have shipped plants to South America, Alaska, Mexico, and Japan, besides all over the Western country, meaning the Western half of the United States. I like the work, it is really like a play to me. Here is one of my slogans in advertising. When others fail, call Motor Repair and Supply Company. I am the state distributor for U.S. Motors, besides selling electrical appliances. I am located in the Morse Brothers Machinery and Supply Building, paying $100 per month. In return, they pay me $100 per month for technical advice. All actual work, they pay me $1.75 per hour. They are very nice people, and they furnish me with heat, light, and power. I have the use of any of their machines and equipment. I have also the use of two stenographers, a phone operator, and bookkeepers. Lucky for me that I am associated with them at the time of the Globe Bank crash. The manager comes to me and said, Jimmy, I understand you are broke. I said yes, financially, but not in spirit. He asked what I intended to do. I said I have two ways of raising money. One is a mortgage on the home. The other, borrow on life insurance and I said I had not made up my mind which was best. He replied, neither one. There is a better way. He said, come in and talk it over with the bookkeeper. The result was they loaned me $2,000 to do business on. I certainly appreciated that to think they were interested in me that much. I had no idea of asking anyone for money. He did not even want a note to show I had their money. No interest, nothing. I have long paid it back, it goes to show that not all large companies are heartless. I could possibly do more business by moving away from their building and renting a space more centrally located, but since that incident, I'm going to stick with them. 
As Jim's customer base began to grow, he soon realized that he needed to move out of the Morse Brothers facility and focus solely on his own brands, products, and services. He moved into a building located at 1730 Wazee Street in downtown Denver and set up shop. In those days, there was no centralized power utility that supplied energy to entire regions, so small municipalities had to generate their own power to meet growth. As the need for electricity grew in Denver and the state of Colorado, Jim became somewhat of a local expert and resource for all things electrical. Using the expanding Colorado power grid as a customer base, Jim manufactured high voltage transformers, substation equipment, and electrical switchboards. It was these early customers that fueled the early growth of Jim's newly formed electric equipment and engineering company. Jim's love and expertise of diesel engines allowed him to be heavily involved in the growing transportation industry in the city of Denver, developing innovative solutions to pair diesel engines and alternating current generator sets. Jim worked closely with the Denver City Cable Railway Company, which in the early 1900s had 30 miles of cable railways running through Denver. He also worked with the Pikes Peak Scenic Railway System, which takes passengers up to the top of Pikes Peak, over 14,000 feet above sea level. The experience gained in the combination of motors, diesel engines, and AC power generators would prove invaluable to Jim and the company as it entered its next exploding market, the telephone industry and the standby power generation that it would require. In 1939, Electric Equipment and Engineering Company installed the first of its kind standby power generation system at the Denver main switchboard of Mountain State's Telephone and Telegraph Company. The system used two 60 kilowatt standby engine generators in parallel operation, an innovative solution that drew interest from all over the country, including from General Motors and AT&T. The Pikes Peak Railroad cars used three engines running in parallel to mechanically drive the train up the steep mountainside. Knowing this, Jim was able to expand on the concept and became curious on how to do the same with two AC generator sets to power electrical loads and proved it could be done on the Denver Main project. This was a novel concept in the electrical field and drew interest from the industry nationwide. Today, after Triple E has completed five infrastructure upgrades at Denver Main, four 1250 kilowatt generator sets auto start and synchronize in parallel operation, a 40 times more powerful system than the one Jim installed over 80 years ago. In the 1940s, it was common for small municipalities to generate their own electrical power a number of local governments reached out to Tripoli to purchase diesel generator sets and AC switchboards for their growing communities. General Motors engines and Triple E AC switchboards were installed all over rural Colorado, including Ray, Julesburg, Lamar, Loveland, and Longmont. Not only did the smaller towns in Colorado, Kansas, and New Mexico need electrification, so too did the farmers and ranchers around the western United States. In order to help grow crops and support livestock on the Eastern Plains, a company called the Worthington Corporation, founded in 1845, opened a Denver office to sell pumps for irrigation systems. Up until 1911, these irrigation pumps were largely steam-powered. Jim's understanding of motors, generators, and electrical systems proved yet again to be the right resource at the right time, and Triple E and Worthington formed a strong relationship in serving the irrigation industry in Colorado. Worthington provided the pumps and drive systems, and Triple E, acting as a dealer for U.S. Motors, provided an electrical means to drive the pumps. In the 1950s, the growth associated with Worthington coupled with the electrification of the small municipalities of the state of Colorado left no choice but for Triple E to expand its workspace. Further incentive came when Worthington, Triple E's largest customer at the time, decided to move out of downtown Denver. Triple E became an industrial neighbor up north, building a new facility in Denver's Globeville neighborhood. Triple E was able to provide the best customer service and technical expertise to Worthington for the irrigation industry, as well as other pump-related projects. With new space and room to expand, Triple E now had a permanent home just north of downtown Denver at 40 West 49th Street. Jim's son, Richard Dick Moroni, entered the business in 1949 after earning an electrical engineering degree from the University of Colorado, and his other son, Tom Moroni, would join a couple of years later. 
Both Dick and Tom would end up working for Triple E for over 60 years each, dedicating their life's work to the company that their father had founded. Jim was always proud of his two sons and what they chose to make their life's work. In 1958, Jim, Dick, and Tom swapped out the internal combustion engine of a 1955 Chevy sedan and replaced it with what they knew best, an electric motor. The car could travel up to 100 miles on a single charge and could reach speeds of 45 miles per hour. Not only was the local newspaper interested in the electric car, so too was the federal government in Hertz Rent-A-Car. Clearly, Jim and his sons were ahead of their time, as today, some 60 years later, electric cars are a common, proven mode of transportation. Throughout the company's history, Triple E has been fortunate to work with some of Colorado's most iconic companies. In the 1950s, Coors Brewing of Golden, Colorado reached out to Triple E to assist with the electrification of its own manufacturing plant. Samsonite Luggage, believing they could make a better suitcase than the cardboard ones offered at the time, turned to Triple E throughout the 60s and 70s for a wide range of electrical products for their manufacturing process. Gates Rubber Company, yet another Colorado startup, also relied heavily on Triple E in the 1950s for a variety of AC equipment. As these companies continued to grow and make their mark on Denver history, so too did electric equipment and engineering. It wasn't long before the new shop was full of equipment, products, and projects ready to be shipped out to customers across Colorado and the western states. With a growing customer base, Triple E started to reach the limits of what the first building at 40 West 49th Street could provide. In 1961, Triple E completed the South Shop expansion, more than doubling the space for Triple E to continue to engineer and manufacture electrical products for the standby generator marketplace. The new building included a production floor, a three-ton crane, and a loading dock, making it easy to ship all of the standby generator controls, switchboards, transformers, and custom control panels that would soon be assembled in this new space. After living an incredible life, leaving his home country and coming to America, starting and running a business for 44 years, Jim Maroney passed away in 1966. He was incredibly proud of his family, his country, and the company that he built, and the work that Dick and Tom would continue to undertake. The center shop was also built around this time to connect the north and south shops to house Triple E's expanding inventory of manufacturing equipment and machines used to build and assemble new product lines. Manually operated shears were used to cut steel and copper. Band saws, coil winding machines, and manual press brakes to bend metals were all used during the assembly process. The 60s and 70s were a time of rapid expansion for both Triple E and the telecommunications industry. Mountain State's Telephone and Telegraph changed their name to Mountain Bell and continued to build infrastructure across the western region. Over time, company records show that Triple E would produce standby generator equipment for almost every dot on the map in the Rocky Mountain region. As standby generation systems evolved, so too did the need to enhance reliable operation that automatically switched alternating current building loads to the standby generator system in case of a utility power outage. There are three key components for a system like this to work. First, a monitoring system to detect a power failure. Second, a way to start and control the standby generator. And third, was to transfer power from the utility power source to the generator. Triple E began to design and produce a new line of transfer switches that used circuit breakers to transfer from one power source to another. The key was to combine the controller for the standby generator as well as switching the power from one source to another, allowing the system to scale from 100 to 4,000 amps. Company records show that at least 150 Mountain Bell sites were equipped with these transfer switches from 1969 to 1982. These early transfer switch designs would lay the foundation for what Triple E would eventually trademark as an ECATS lineup, a combination of an engine control and transfer switch that could easily control if power was coming from the utility or the standby generators to meet the building's electrical needs. In the 1980s, Dick's sons, Craig and Mike, come on board after graduating from the University of Colorado with electrical engineering degrees. Their entry into the business comes just as the breakup of the Bell system is ordered by a federal judge. It is also the time when the cellular telephone industry begins to explode as the personal cell phone starts to become commonplace. Triple E found itself well situated when Denver was announced as the headquarters for US West, which later became Quest, CenturyLink, and now Lumen. 
The size of this particular baby bell required that Triple E's standby power systems for this telecommunications region be built with reliable products given the sheer size of the territory. In the late 80s and early 90s, the birth of the internet and the telecommunications industry once again relies on Triple E's expertise with standby power, transfer switches, and our associated control systems. Triple E played a key role in the growth of the nation's Advanced Mobile Phone Service, or AMPS, network by providing an integrated power system we call a power platform. Introduced by Bell Labs in 1983, AMPS initially became the most widely deployed cellular system within the United States. Likewise, the explosive growth in the number of cell sites used with cellular networks resulted in new forms of Triple E integration and product features that included U.S. patents. One patent allowed for a manual transfer switch to be upgraded to an automatic transfer switch without shutting down power to the building loads. Innovative solutions like this are what helps Triple E maintain its strong reputation in the telecommunications industry. Deregulation of the telecommunications industry in 1980 resulted in the birth of a number of cellular telephone companies. The advancement of 4G networks allowed these companies to rapidly transmit both voice and data across the country and the world. Flexibility and a willingness to configure Triple E AC and DC products for each individual telephone company based on their own network standards was a key reason why telco planners continued to reach out to Triple E for our products and services. The development of 5G networks provides yet another massive leap in data transmission speeds as the world opens up to new concepts such as the Internet of Things. Smartphones, smart cars, smart appliances, and smart medical devices are just a few of the applications that require faster speeds and networks that can handle massive amounts of data. These smart appliances require Triple E smart switchboards to maximize the performance of these 5G networks. Network engineers continue to reach out to Triple E for custom AC switchboard designs that are used to power distributed edge computing facilities and point of delivery around the country. In most cases, Triple E has a complete and custom switchboard offering to match the customer's request after two design meetings. The future is bright as power production attempts to migrate to a green economy. Triple E products are at the heart of these electrical systems that connect and distribute the output of solar inverters, wind generators, and natural gas turbines. Multiple power sources that operate in parallel, with or without integration of the local power grid, reminds us of when Triple E first paralleled two 60-kilowatt generator sets almost 100 years ago. These new systems will result in lower costs, will reduce power losses, and result in a cleaner environment. These new and improved electrical systems will provide ways in which Triple E's contribution will continue to serve our industry. To paraphrase Jim Maroney's earlier 1922 handwritten notes, the next 100 years will truly be a lot of fun. After 100 years, we want to sincerely thank all of our customers, clients, employees, and family members, past and present. Thank you to all of those who've joined Triple E on this journey of a century of service to the electrical industry. We are truly honored to have worked with all of you and look forward to the next 100 years of designing, engineering, and manufacturing world-class electrical products.